Welcome to one of my first videos in this new video series that I'm going to be starting today. And this is a series I've been thinking for a while to start and I decided to call it Worth the Read. Inspired in part by the BuzzFeed video series that is known for their food um, called Worth It. Instead of with restaurants and food, I'm going to be deciding if a book series or an author is worth the read. So I'm excited to see if any of these book series or authors I'm going to be talking about is worth your time and to get invested in. If this, this is your first time watching a video of mine, hi my name is Monica and I make booktube videos and also book to tv adaptation videos here on YouTube. If that sounds interesting to you, give me a thumbs up and that will let me know if you want to see more of these videos and also if you're interested you could hit the subscribe button and you could see more of my videos. Okay so I made a little disclaimer before diving into today's video. I am only one person so take everything that I'm saying with a grain of salt since everyone is entitled to their own experiences and opinions on whatever author or book series I'm covering in that video. My own reading experience is also unique to myself and that will also be the same for you who's watching. I'm not here to be the end-all be-all of declaring of whatever book series or author is the best ever or the worst ever. However, I do acknowledge that certain authors or book series do have some controversies attached to them, but I'm always learning myself from others' perspective and I do welcome friendly and constructive discussions on whatever topic is being covered. But please do keep in mind I'm just making these videos for fun and I'm mainly focusing these videos on the books itself and not really much the author and I'm going to be talking about like reading experience, writing, and how the book is formed and how I like it or dislike it. And ultimately when I say it's worth the read or not, it's honestly just all for fun. It's not anything so serious. Anyways, with all that being said, I do hope you enjoy this video series and I will be continuing making these videos and see if I should tweak some things here and there because this is all a learning experience. We're all in this together. Well. If you made it this far into the video, you know that today I'm going to be talking about Sarah J Maas. And first, I did want to cover my own personal reading experience with this author. And I would say thus far, it has been a positive one so far. I started to read Sarah J Maas books way back when, when they first started publishing her books. And I think that was back in 2013. And I've been following her book series as they have been releasing since then. And I would say... It's been nearly a decade that I've been reading her books and that makes me really old since I did start reading her I think in like grade 10 or 11. So yeah, I've been a long time fan of her books and such. But then again, like back then I was just like a really casual reader. I wasn't making like booktube videos or like really diving in deeply. It was purely entertainment for me. With that being said, I do know that Sarah has a lack of diversity and representation in her books but I do think over time from like back then in 2012 to 2013 all the way to now to 2022 there has been improvement but of course all these issues aren't resolved overnight but I do think that there has been improvement and there's always room for more improvement. What I do enjoy most about these book series are how the characters i grown such an emotional attachment to them over the time that I've read her books. And I would also say that's also a positive on Sarah's end that she knows how to write those great characters to draw you in and care about them. And I think that's everything I have to say about my own personal experience with Sarah J Maas. But I know people have issues with her so if you don't want to keep on watching this video that's okay but I'm going to be talking about the book series now. I did want to talk about how I'm going to be formatting each book series and how I'm going to be structuring their sections. First I did want to have a quick summary of what the book series is about to see if that piques your interest. Secondly, I did want to see what qualities or tropes that may interest you as a reader. And third, I did want to mention my own pros and cons and my own personal reading experience with these book series. And I think with the worth the read videos, I will be covering books that I have read and not just be willy-nilly about it. 
And at the end of the video, I will be deciding if this author will be worth the read. Okay, so first up we have Throne of Glass. And a quick summary of this one is we are following Selena Saradothian, who is an assassin who is then in a competition to become the king's champion. So carrying out personal errands for the king, including killing people. But then the Crown Prince Dorian and the Captain of the Guard Kale are both interested in her and that just leads to more complex things. But there is a larger Evo at play here. So the rest of the books in the series evolve way off from book one and the content we get in this first book, which is a given since it's a seven book long series. And we also have appearances of fae, witches, and monsters throughout the series and that makes it really fun. With each book, we do get to dive in deep with a large cast of characters and we do see their perspectives, but our main one is Selena. And again, the characters and the romances or friendships between the characters are one of the strongest points of this book series for me. So some main themes that you can expect in this series are number one, the fight for survival and freedom from the villains or the systems that are in place on Aurelia, which is the continent that this book takes place in. Secondly, there are really great and engaging power dynamics in the political system as well as in the society. Third, we have feminism, I would say is a really major theme since there are really strong women in this book and not only there being the typical great female fighters, but there's also the quiet strength ones who don't necessarily know how to fight, but they are also quite strong in their own right. And number four, romance plays a large part in the series and it really is fun to see romance play out in a fantasy book since that is one of my favorite type of romances to read about. Throne of Glass is a particular series that does hold some special significance to me since I was reading the series as the books were basically being published and I was anticipating each new book release and that makes it more memorable for me, I think. And as I mentioned many times before, and I think I will mention many times after this, in the series, I really love the characters and some of my favorites are Lena, Dorian, Manon, Lurkin, Rowan, Lysandra. I know I'm missing a couple, but those are the ones that came up. Going more deeply into what I really like about Throne of Glass include, first, I would say how the characters manage to find their strength and peace within themselves no matter what they have gone through. As well as there are so many great tropes that are interspersed throughout this long series. There is the chosen one trope and yes, I still really like that trope. But I do like when there is more of a unique twist on the chosen one trope now. But like when I was first picking up Throne of Glass, it was just so addicting. This series is also really big on found family. We also have secret identity, soulmate, magical quests, wars, and a bunch more other of uh, romance tropes specifically. Another aspect of the series I did like was the improvement on the writing itself and also the expansion of the world itself with each book. So this is a small con here but I think in the first book Sarah wrote this when she was 16 years old I believe but with each book after the first one Everything improves in terms of the characters, the plot, and the action. I do have to say my strongest positive for Throne of Glass is my emotional attachment to all the characters. And I remember at the end of Kingdom of Ash, I was so sad to be leaving all these characters behind and have everything end. One major con for Throne of Glass is there is a lack of explanation of how the magic works in this world. There is an explanation for how magic comes about, but not really like distinct rules of how magic works for our characters. It's just like, okay, they have an infinite amount of power, but then it's like, what is their limitation? I do like to have like my magic systems a little bit more explained, but I could wave off poor magical systems and be like, okay, the strong points are this instead. And I do have to say something else about the, I think the writing itself as well, is how the series is labeled as young adult, but then later on in the series, as you get from like book four and onwards, it becomes more mature with the mature romance scenes that are thrown in. So it becomes a little bit mature in that regard. I would still say it is a young adult series, but there are some adult romance scenes in there. 
but overall Throne of Glass is one of my top favorite series and although I do have a strong emotional attachment to it, um, I still recommend this series to new readers. Okay, that was a lot for Throne of Glass, but next we have A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I do have the original cover and like the spine is like damaged because I think I got like a used copy. I still do like the original YA covers. Short summary for Agatar, we are following a human hunter, Feyre, who accidentally kills a fey wolf and she is then forced to make a deal with a fey high lord and she's fighting to survive in these strange fey lands. Agatar is a blend of YA and adult but I think after its rebranding with a Court of Silver Flames, it is now considered an adult series. I would categorize this book series as more adult since there are mature romance scenes and overall mature themes in this series, especially in the later books. Similar to Throne of Glass, Akatar has a large cast of characters and you quickly learn who to root for and not root for. We start off in the Spring Court and that quickly changes later on and I would still say the best book in the series is book two which is A Court of Mist and Fury. I have a Court of Mist and Fury like right there but I would say that book is the best. <laughs> so main themes in the series are number one, sacrifice. There are many characters that go through that sacrificial sort of role. <laughs> whether they put themselves up for a sacrifice in order to help others. But I think with this theme, many of the characters do go to the ends of the earth to save their loved ones or protect their loved ones, and Feyre is one of them. Number two, there are complex fate politics and customs, and we also see a lot of family relations going on with the fate courts. Third, I would do say that a main theme is that there is a scale of morality. So we see how our characters struggle to do what is right or wrong, even at the cost of their own morals or values. And I would also attached to this point that there is the theme of redemption, especially in the later books. And I do love seeing characters have internal struggles as well as external ones and learn how to overcome them. And finally, one of the main themes in this book is romance. And I do have to say that there is one particular relationship in this book series that is one of the strongest out of all the book series I'm talking about today. And if you know, you know. <laughs> Onto my own personal opinion on Akatar, it is another fantasy series that I really love. And we do have a large cast of characters in this book as well as complex plot lines. So again, similar to Throne of Glass, I'm just going to list off my favorite characters with no context. Resend, Feyre, Cassian, Azriel, Amran, and I would say Nesta. Basically a lot of people from the inner circle. But again, no context to it, so I don't want to spoil everything for you. Going more into depth of specific reasons why I have enjoyed this series. So unlike Throne of Glass, which is written in a third person perspective, Akatar is written in a first person perspective. And we mainly see the world through Feyre's eyes. And in later books, we do see other perspectives. We are reading mainly from Feyre's perspective in the first three books, which is the main trilogy of the series. And then the later books in the series do branch off. I think from book four onwards, not including like novellas. I feel with the first person perspective, it feels more intimate with the character and you learn more of the inner character's thoughts. The same can be achieved with third person, but I think it was a nice change from the class. So more tropes that are found in this book series do include the found family, I love this trope so much and it does play a large part in the series. We have enemies to lovers, a one bed trope at some point in the series, and we also have those characters, like that big strong character that has that one soft spot for that one character. And in Akatar, we do have a better understanding of where magic comes from the origin of magic and how magic works in this world. It's still a little bit vague in terms of characters' limitations and such. I still appreciate for what we do get in these series. Actually, like thinking about my main praise for this series is for book two onwards, but I still think book two is like the strongest out of the series and it is worth to get through this first book to get to Akamath. A con for the series as a whole would be the miscommunication trope. And some parts of this trope in particular is when characters don't speak up for themselves if they have a problem or 
specifically when a character carries out a dangerous plan without telling any of their loved ones and they just go ahead and do their plan and they're putting themselves at great risk. Oh yeah, there was also like the overuse of the words male and female instead of man and woman. Like I get it, they're fae, but come on, come on. There are some slower points in this series, but I think that's expected since there's a lot of things going on. Like there's different connections happening between characters from I don't want to spoil. So I would still say the benefits outweigh the negatives for this overall series and it's definitely a fantasy series that I will be rereading. That is because of this next series and that is Crescent City. So Crescent City, the name for the first book is House of Earth and Blood and then the name of the second book is House of Sky and Breath. But the overall series is called Crescent City and I will refer to Crescent City because the actual name of these books are way too long to say all the time. So this series is Sarah J Mass's like first official adult fantasy series urban fantasy series and I do think the average number of Sarah's books now are around like 800 pages well for the series each book is 800 pages and I do think that can be reduced a bit. Crescent City we are following a half fae half human Bryce Quinlan and she is embroiled into this murder mystery in solving a murder mystery that she does not want to be involved in and that leads her needing to work with a angel named Hunt. And Crescent City does take place in a modern city that is filled with supernatural creatures. So right off the bat, the themes we do have in this series are the effects of wars, traumas, and also the healing recovering process. In this first book, we also do have a detective style mystery aspect, which I do love and appreciate. That's one of the huge stand-up points for me, which was the murder mystery slash detective detectiving. And we also have strong friendships and romance relationships that we see. And again, the strong point for me in all of Sarah's books has to be her characters and how she writes the relationships between them. And you really do learn to care for the characters really early on in the series. So some things I did like about Crescent City would be the darker tone and atmosphere that this world takes on since there is a lot more open drug use like alcohol use. There's also different supernatural races that are either war warring against each other or they have like really high tensions against each other. And another standpoint is the relationship between Bryce and Hunt. This was really well done and I would say it's an enemies to friends to lovers type relationship and it's slow burn. And finally one of the biggest things in the series would be like the final payoff of all the events. Okay this book is too heavy so I'm not gonna hold it up anymore. With finally getting that final payoff in each book, you get those really great action sequences and suspense at its utmost height. And having finally all those secrets unravel and you as a reader learning what is going on, it's really worth it to get through all 800 pages. <laughs> okay, going into like my main cons and issues I had with Crescent City. First would be the massive info dump and world building that happens in the first 100 pages of um, House of Earth and Blood. It was a lot to get through. There was a lot of world building and the world building does continue in book two. But I think once you understand what is going on, like you get the basic gist of it. I think it's fine after that. I was also hoping to see more maturity and growth in the writing style itself. Since now it's like an adult series, right? You would want to see something different. I do think that there were improvements, but overall, it just felt like she just added a bunch of curse words and just had like the same writing as her young adult series. And there were some characters in this book, especially book two, that we were given more exposition on and more detail on, but I didn't really care for them. But overall, the ending of book two in particular in the Crescent City series was well worth it, well worth going through all those pages and making the slow buildup of the plot lines worth it, I will be continuing this series. I would say that if you are interested in the Crescent City series that you should read the Court of Thorns and Roses series too. I just like how things are happening now in every book series. Okay, so that was a lot to say and talk about and cover. I didn't think this would be a really long video, but I think we're at like minute 
20 or something by now so given everything i have said about each book series individually and how it's overwhelmingly positive for sarah j mass books i would have to say that she is worth the read there are cons to her book series and characters but i do think given that where i was when i first started reading her throne of glass series and how now looking back onto it i could see how there were issues and how there were flaws in those books but i do acknowledge them that they exist however overall the emotional attachment to the characters the great build up in the books and being part of a fan base does really make me say yes to check out these book series if you wish that is up to you if you want to it's completely your choice but i am going to conclude this video now and i want to say thank you for stopping by and tuning in and if you would like to give me a huge thumbs up that would be much appreciated also if you want to subscribe and see more of these videos you can go right ahead and do that and also ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads thanks all for watching bye